Hello and welcome to Limiting Factors in Carrying Capacity. This is Ms. Smidra. Just wanted to kind of take you through some notes on limiting factors in carrying capacity. Remember you can pause or rewind this at any time. You, are sh you should be taking notes on the piece of paper that you have for homework and later we will tape it in your ISN. So limiting factors. What is a limiting factor? A limiting factor is a resource or other factors in the environment that can lower or limit a population's growth. Hint, hint, you need to be writing this down. So resources or other factors in an environment that can lower or limit a population's growth. That's why it's called a limiting factor because it can cause a population to decrease or go down. It causes it not to continue growing. Some examples of limiting factor. Think about our oh dear game. So food. This could be food such as prey, such as animals or other organisms, but for plants it would be sunlight. Maybe there's some very tall plants and some trees that are located nearby that are blocking it. The lower plants wouldn't be able to get the sunlight that they needed. <clears throat> Temperature, if things are too cold or too hot, organisms can't survive. Think about if you were in the desert. It'd be very difficult for you to survive when it's super, super hot out. In the same respect, if you were in the Arctic, if it were very, very cold, you wouldn't be able to survive. The same thing goes for organisms. If it's too hot or too cold, organisms cannot survive, or it would cause their populations to decrease or limit. Space. Remember back to the heater and only a certain amount of students could fit on that space in the heater. That would be space. If organisms don't have enough space, they aren't able to reproduce. Hint, hint, you should be writing these down in your notes page as well. So space is also a limiting factor. Disease. So if we're talking about disease, that could be something that has come around. I think there was a big deer a couple years ago, big deer disease that hit a lot of hunters. But disease could be something that spreads throughout the population, causing the population to decrease quite a bit. Predation sounds like a very complicated word. All it has to do is predator prey. So are there too many predators for the amount of prey, which would cause the population to go down? So if we're talking about humans being the predator and prey being the like deer, are there too many humans hunting the deer? Then that would be the prey. So predation has to do with the pop with the predator and prey populations going increasing or decreasing. Competition. All this means if you're thinking about like a basketball competition, you're both trying to get the same thing. You're both trying to win. Competition typically is for food within organisms, or sometimes it could be for breeding partners, but competition is just that they're trying to get the same thing. So maybe they're both trying to get the same, two lions are both trying to get the same zebra. Competition, two, two organisms are trying to get the same thing. Now for moving on to carrying capacity. So hint, hint, you're gonna wanna write this down. Carrying capacity is the number of individuals of a species that an ecosystem can support. So just like the heater, that was carrying capacity. The heater could only hold so many organisms or so many people in that area. So carrying capacity, we're going to look at some practice examples. You can pause these at any time. So let's practice. If we're looking at this graph where we've got the number of individuals on the this access, how many individuals can this area support? What's the carrying capacity? So go ahead and look at the number of individuals and look at the time. At what time was there the carrying capacity? Was it maxed out? Go ahead and pause it. Now you should have written down or at least jotted down somewhere on your paper that four was the maximum. If you notice and you're looking at this graph, see the population keeps increasing and then finally it stabilizes after this is maybe four years or so. Now let's try another one. Again, you can just write this anywhere. You don't necessarily even need it on your notes page. This is just for you to practice so when we do these in class, you've got a clue of how to do it. Now if we're looking at this one, this is a population size. Um, this is on the y-axis. It goes y to the sky and then x is across the page. So what is the approximate carrying pop 
carrying capacity of this population. So at what point is the, the max amount of organisms? Go ahead and pause this and write down your answer. You should have written down about 300. You can see right here, this is where the carrying capacity maxes out. That's when it can only sustain that many organisms. It can't get any bigger. Maybe they run out of space. Maybe they run out of food. There's tons of different things that the population could run out. Now let's try another one. So if we've got some cockroaches, we're going to say this graph above shows the growth of the population of the cockroaches under observation in a laboratory. What day did the cockroaches reach their carrying capacity? So at what day were there too many of these bugs? Go ahead and write it down somewhere and then pause this. Hopefully you chose day 50 because that's where it starts to level out. In day 30 and day 40, it's still continuing to grow. So at day 50 is when we're maxing out on the amount of organisms. You can feel free to rewind this or watch this again, but tomorrow we're going to be practicing limiting factors and carrying capacities. See you tomorrow.